Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro, where I'm taking a bit of a break from what I've been normally doing to start a new project where I go in and take a, a look at various general uh, subjects related to astrophotography. And today I'm going to start it out by looking at using filters and does it mean that you need to have longer exposures if you're using one. Now the concept behind this one is the same whether you're doing narrowband or using a light suppression filter on a um, one shot colour camera or a DSLR mirrorless camera. Um, the idea behind it's all the same and there is some inf misinformation out there, uh, a lot of confusion and misunderstanding and I hope to be able to clear some of that up today. So let's get into it. Now the simple answer as to whether you need to take a longer exposure if you're using a filter is no. And the long answer is no not really. Um, there is a difference between needing to take a longer exposure and wanting to take a longer exposure and I'll ex try and explain those as we go through this video but in reality no you don't need a longer exposure and I hope to be able to explain why in fairly simple terms as we go through here and first off we need to have a look at why people may think that they do need longer exposures and well there are several well, probably many more than what I've got here reasons why but these are four I just came up with off the top of my head and the first one will be because the resulting images are darker than what they get without the filter and that's to be expected um, that's because you're cutting out all the data you don't want in the image so you're getting a an overall darker image because you're not getting the same data outside what you what you want um, but the actual data you do want is exactly the same or pretty much exactly the same when you're using your filter so it's just the difference between what you don't want and what you do want uh, creates more contrast uh, a higher signal to noise ratio which is good and you know, with a really good narrowband filter if you're shooting narrowband um, it can be up to about a thousand times greater or a thousand percent greater um, signal to noise ratio and that's always good but I'll get into that a bit more later um, then they think they are getting less data and this is false also because you're getting less data that you don't want but the amount of data you're getting, getting that you do want remains the same so that's another misconception there and then you've got people who've come from the world of daytime photography and they, they're used to using ND filters and that and um, it's not the same as using an ND filter uh, something like those filters on your camera lens uh, they just block all the light the whole spectrum of light gets blocked the same amount whereas with a imaging filter for astro it blocks all light except for the narrow bands you want to let through and that's where the difference comes so the ND filter will block all the light the same while an imaging filter will only block what it doesn't want and then of course they read it or saw it somewhere or someone told them on the internet that they need to take longer images and one of the common ones you see is that you know to get your images the same when using uh, RGB filters um, to get them to match your luminance filters you have to take them three times as long blah 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 totally incorrect and I'll cover that in the next section well I'm going to move on and show you exactly what's going on so here we are with the filter spectrum for a, a set of Antlia LRGB um, filters you have the yellow which is your luminance filter which covers the full range and then you have your RG and B filters which covers a limited area of the range now like I said the RGB filters actually cover less of the range but you are not losing the data um, simply put it's only data you're losing is the difference between what the filter you're using can do and a hundred percent of light so there will be some difference there but generally if you're over about 90 percent it's doing pretty well and you will get the data you want um, and simply put that when you switch your um, filter to from say a luminance to a, a red filter um, all that's happening is oh okay, here I've done the green filter here sorry so the green filter you're still getting the same data that you were originally getting you're just not getting the bad data that you don't want outside that filter 
So this part in the middle is exactly the same as what you're getting when you weren't using the filter, but you're just not getting the outside of the filter. And that works the same for any filter you're using. Um, it doesn't matter if you're switching from a 12 nanometer HA down to a 3 nanometer HA. The 12 nanometer already includes that 3 nanometer, so you're getting the same amount of data with both filters in that limited range. So outside, so using this as an example, say the luminance is your uh, 12 nanometer filter and the green is the uh, 3 nanometer, the green still lays inside the yellow. So your 3 nanometer section will still be inside your 12 nanometer section. You're just not getting the extra data you don't want or need. So you're still getting the same amount of data for that particular uh, spectrum or width, you know, a few nanometers compared to what you would get with the wider nanometer. It's, for that particular little piece, it's the same amount of data. You don't lose any of that. And that's where people get mostly confused because they think that, you know, oh, I'm going narrow, so I'm going to get less data. Overall, yes, but the data you actually want is exactly the same. And as I said, it doesn't matter which uh, type of filter you're using. If you go on, this is for an Optolong L Pro. And it's the same thing. You're still, the data's all still there. This data covered in the red line is all still there and was there without the filter. All you're doing is blocking out the parts you don't want. The amount of data you're getting is exactly the same elsewhere. And that's the one thing that really, really, really confuses people. So whether you're using a narrowband filter set, changing from a, a, a wider to a narrowband for a uh, HA or an oxygen 3 or a sulfur 2 filter or whatever, it all works the same way. The amount of data that you want remains the same. It's the amount of data you don't want that changes and that will make a huge difference in your images, especially the increase in signal to noise ratio you will get from it. And of course, um, without extending the exposures, the overall image will appear slightly darker, but that's because of the difference in contrast now that you've eliminated background light that you don't want. So I hope that's explained that part a bit better for everyone. Um, now I'll move on to the next section and we'll have a bit more of a talk about what's going on. So after telling you that no, you don't need to take longer exposures, uh, I'm now going to tell you there are times when you will probably will need longer exposures. And that's generally to do with focusing and plate solving. Um, because of the amount of data you're getting overall, you won't get as many stars to show up, they won't be as bright as, every, as what they would be and everything else. And due to this, you will need to extend your exposure to get what you need to be able to get good focus and be able to do plate solving. So that's two occasions where you, you might need to do longer exposures. Um, there may be others, but that's all I can really think of. So it's just for focusing and being able to plate solve, you may need to extend your exposures just so you get enough stars or get a bright enough stars to be able to get your focus and plate solving working. But that's about the only time you might need it. So you don't need longer exposures? Well, that's correct. But then comes the question of, can you take them if desired? And the answer to that is simply, hell yeah. As long as your tracking and guiding are good and the atmospheric conditions are suitable, then the exposures can be as long as you want them to be. Um, these conditions, along with uh, when the stars become overexposed and the performance of the camera used, uh, the heat and noise, etc., um, are what place restrictions on your exposure length. And these restrictions are as valid with a filter as without a filter. Um, you're going to be restricted by what your equipment's capable of, and with using a filter, it is still the same thing. Um, you know, you might change your filter to a narrower filter and decide you want to take. 10 minute long exposures instead of five minutes of exposures. And that's fine as long as the image comes out that you're happy with. Um, you can go as long as you like. And as I say, that's gonna be restricted by the conditions you're working and the equipment you're using. So simply, hell yeah. 
you can do it longer if you desire but to get the same amount of data of the data you want and not the data you don't want there is no need to go longer you can go longer as much as you like and just come up with something that you're happy with but that uh, pretty much covers this subject um, I hope you can understand it I didn't want to get into technical things about them and you know talking too much about signals noise ratios and blah 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 uh, just boring is so I'll leave this one here um, wishes all clear skies and uh, take care of you and I'll catch you later